Hello there. I'm at the Kitt Peak Visitor Center at the RC 16 inch. We have a software BIS ME mount and an RCOS 16 inch telescope. And what we're going to be talking about here this evening is using the camera control in the Sky X. This actually works very well and they've uh, done some revisions in July of 2016 that were quite a bit of an improvement actually. Um, okay, so the first thing we want to talk to first is we want to go ahead and connect the focuser, an option that not too many people use but we're going to use it here. So I'm, I'm going to click on the focuser tab and you'll see a focuser setup. What you'll need to do is select your focuser. Now we have the TCC software focuser, so that's ASCOM compliant. So I'm going to pick an ASCOM focuser and then I'll come into settings and I'm going to choose the RCOS TCC. You need to click properties, set up your COM port and anything else you need to set up here. You click OK and then you click OK again. Now it takes a second here for this to go away but once it does we will go ahead and uh, connect. Okay, so we're done here. Um, we can leave these settings the way they are. And now we're ready to connect the focuser. And we are connected. So you can see we're at position 1300. We can actually change this around. Uh, for example, if we wanted to be more precise. Uh, I know that the focus is really close, so I'm not going to move it too much. And then you can change it by certain amounts here, certain percentages. Um, you can also have temperature compensation if you want to set that up. You need to train the telescope in order to make that work, or train the focuser to make that work. It doesn't take long, but it does take the entire evening to do it, uh, from what I exp my experience with temperature compensation. So now that the focus set is set up, we can go ahead and uh, set up the main camera. Again, it's the same kind of setup. Everything is pretty much the same in the Sky X. We're going to go ahead and click on camera setup. And we will choose the camera, which I've already done here. We're using the SBIG 8300 one-shot color camera. So this is where you would want to also set up your filter wheel or anything else you want to set up. But since we do have a one-shot color camera, we don't have a filter wheel. So I'm going to click close on this. And I'm going to go ahead and click connect. Okay. So once you connect, the temperature starts cooling down right off the bat. We're at 15 degrees Celsius. And I've the temperature is set at minus 15. You can actually change this to uh, whatever you want to change it to. Um, so, and here, by the way, this turn off uh, temperature when you disconnect. If you don't, if you want to disconnect the camera but keep the temperature on, you'll need to uncheck that. Okay. So we're ready to take um, uh, exposure and do some focusing. Now the telescope's already focused, but we'll go through the routine anyways. Okay. You'll notice the exposure time, exposure delay. I, I usually bend three by three to get a initial focus. And then um, I don't usually do any uh, reduction or calibration. Now, what you want to eventually do is we're going to take photos continuously. And we'll go to a subframe, but we're going to do that just a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and take the first photo. And you can see here's our, here's our uh, object that we're actually looking at. There's not much here, but this is actually NGC's. Uh, 7823. Okay, so what you want to do is go ahead and get some rough focusing. Once you've done that and you've got it ready, then you're going to want to set the binning over here to one by one. I'm not going to do that right now, but you'll go ahead and set it to one by one in the interest of time. And then you, once you've taken the one by one exposure, you're going to draw a subframe around this star. Now this little tab up here with draw subframe allows you to draw a box here. So all I did was click this this box right here and do this little box. And you'll notice over here that the subframe 
checkbox is now set. Okay, now we can tell I take another photo. And you can see here, this is our star. Now, this is where you want to take continuously and make adjustments to your focus. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so it's taking continuous photos. Now this graph button will actually show you what our uh, graph values are. You can see the star is saturated, which generally are not a good, so this is not a good star to pick on in the first place. Because you need, you should, you should focus on a star that doesn't saturate. But for this a demo, it doesn't matter. You can see the half flux diameter, and these are very good numbers. So we're all set. Once you've got your focusing all set, we can close this, and we'll go ahead and hit abort. And we want to go ahead and turn off to take continuous and uncheck the subframe. By unchecking the subframe, we can take another exposure and we'll get the full frame again like we just had a second ago. Okay, so the primary camera's focused. What about the guider? Okay, so let's go ahead and get the guider all set up. And let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Uh, you'll notice that the camera setup works the same way. Um, we're using the QSI 540. You know, so you're going to pick the, in this case, I'm picking the QSI uh, Universal Drive. So uh, the, for QSI, you have to actually download the drivers and install it for the SkyX. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and connect that. The focusing tab pretty much works identical to what we just saw. Uh, everything's exactly the same. So there's no reason to go through that again. But I am going to go ahead um, and get into the Auto Guide tab right now because we want to actually start guiding. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our exposure, set our binning, and um, I'll probably go ahead and set this at uh, 2 by 2 And I'm going to set an Auto Dark. That's a good idea. Now, um, you can actually, uh, if you if you have a guider that does not have a shutter, you can use full calibration. And when you do that, then you can actually sl select uh, the image calibration group. And what you'll do is you pick your dark frames and your biases and all that, and you get that all set up. And once that's set up, what will happen is when the exposure is taken, it will use the calibrated data to calibrate that frame accordingly. Uh, so if a perfect example of this would be the Starlight Express Lodestar. It doesn't have a sh it doesn't have a shutter. I I have one. It works great. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Auto Dark because um, we have the QSI, and I'm going to go ahead and take an exposure. And um, there it is. There's our guide star. Okay, so the, first, the next thing we need to do is we need to calibrate. But before I do that, I want to introduce the setup. Okay, this is where you uh, set up uh, various things. Um, you, here, here, these are the calibrating distances, and you get a choice. You get a chance to change this. Um, I strongly recommend that you use direct guide instead of a guide or relay cable. Uh, direct guide is a much more precise way of making corrections these days, uh, and uh, more and more people are turning to it. Um, okay, so there's a there's other tabs here. Um, calibration. This was the last calibration I just did, um, and things like that. So okay, but we're going to calibrate again. Okay, so the way we do that is we'll go ahead and take another exposure. And down here, we're going to say, click. Now, you can actually double click on the star, but I always just auto find it. And you can see a little box that flashed over here just a second ago on the star. So now I'm going to choose calibrate. And this is, again, this is where I can change my parameters. If you are using an AO unit, this is, this is here for that. We are not. 
So I click OK. Now what's it, what it's doing is it's moving the telescope in four diff, two different directions. In RA once and then RA back and then deck once and deck back. And what it needs to do is it needs to match the camera angle to where the telescope uh, RA deck match so it can know how to make corrections. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so you'll notice it went ahead and calibrated. And um, so we're ready to go. I always take another exposure here and do the auto fine again and uh, hit auto guide okay so you can see that our guide star is there it might be a little bit out of focus so here's a little trick that I'll tell you about um, as it's guiding we can go into the focus here right here and Okay, let's see, 1250. We'll try that. See if we get a little bit of a smaller star by doing that. See, we see it actually got a little smaller. So uh, that got a little bit more precise focusing. That's just kind of a little trick I picked up on. Kind of makes things easier. Okay, so now it's guiding. These are your guide errors. And if you want to see a graph about all this, um, you can actually uh, do just that. Um, and actually, I have the graph here. So here's, this is our uh, graph. And we got a little bit of wind out here right now, so the telescope's picking that up. Um, but uh, basically what you'll have is, this is a, a graph that of overall you're guiding. This is the brightness of your star, uh, and you can see we're not quite saturated here, which is good. Like I said, we're picking up quite a bit of wind, so that's why this is jumping a little bit. Um, but normally, uh, when we have no wind up here, this guides beautifully. Okay, but so there's our star, and that's not too important, so we'll just put that aside. Now we're going to come back to the camera, and we're ready to set up um, a photo. Now we can actually just go ahead and do one photo. Uh, you'll need to actually check this box to automatically save the photo and then uh, click auto save and this is the folder that you want to save things in now I'm not going to change this this is where I was last time at you want to automatically save photos and but you do want to give um, give it a name so NGC 70 23. Can't remember exactly the NGC. I think that's it. Okay. And now I'm re I could take an exposure. Now this is just one single exposure. Um, so if I click, um, and you can see it's going to, let's see, let's go ahead and take a 20 second exposure here. And what it's doing is it's going to go ahead and do just that. And here on the top you can see the exposure time that's coming across uh, and then you'll eventually see a downloading time and uh, once it, once the download is there you'll get a shot of it and you can see a little bit more of the nebula here right here okay now the next thing I want to show you is how to take a series now, if you're using a full-frame CCD camera, in other words, you have an LRGB filter, you can set up multiple series, one for the clear, one for the red, one for the green, one for the blue. This per, per series option will go and take the series across. In other words, it will do all the clear first, then all the red, then all the blue, and all the green, and so on. If you do it across the series, it will do a luminous, a red, a green, a blue, a luminous, red, green, blue. And one advantage of doing that is to make sure you actually get everything in case something goes wrong. Um, I usually do it per series because I don't want to waste time changing filters. So you're, you're, you set your exposure here. Um, and we can just set 120 seconds just for the heck of it. 
And with a one-shot color camera, you've got to use one by one. You cannot bin. And uh, you put how many times do you want to put this in here? And I'm just going to put one. Um, and then if you're going to calibrate, which I don't recommend doing on full frame images, because uh, let me go ahead and start this. Oops, actually, I added a series, actually. Okay, let me close that. Um, and uh, we're ready to go. Take series. Okay, so now it's taking the two-minute exposure. Um, what I was going to say here is you don't want to calib do calibration. Uh, that's generally, a lot of people will do an auto dark, and that's not a good idea because lots of things can go happen with the dark frame. Uh, it could be a bad dark, and then it would calibrate, and there's no way to recover from that. So generally speaking, it's not a good idea. But it is there in case you need it. Um, same thing and again you can use full calibration so that would be one thing if you know for sure you have a, your good calibration frames uh, you can use a full calibration I'll use all your biases all your flats all your darks and calibrate um, we're going to go ahead and let this photo finish because we're and this is about all I was going to cover um, this is actually very very good the guiding on this uh, program works very well. I am very impressed with it. Uh, it is easy to use. Uh, you get really good results and uh, I used it the other night to do a four hour exposure on a multiple series frame and it worked very well. So as you can see uh, it's showing the progress and you can always go back to the guider. I don't know how well it's doing with the wind we have. So um, it looks like it's doing a little better. And uh, we're almost there. So once this is done, we'll, you'll see the image. And it's, auto, it's being saved automatically in the folder that you told it to. But you can also save it from here, too. So. Okay, so it's about done. And it's going to go ahead and download. And uh, this was just two minutes. Um, we'll see how well it did. The wind was blowing around a lot. So, um, and there we go. And there we, there's our image. And we're good to go. Uh, like I said, um, from here under the photo menu, you can actually save it or uh, do any, you know, do anything you want. You can even image link it. And what that does is it takes this image and maps it to the sky X to where it's at. So that's another very powerful feature. Well, that covers what I was going to cover. So have a great evening.